Hey, hello. I'm back. It's great to be here. Thank you, Fiona. Uh, Fiona is here at Moodle HQ and uh, based in Brisbane. I'm very glad we're doing this online. It's uh, actually better that we're doing this online. I think we uh, really have a chance to push what we do, which is online learning uh, together. So we'll be learning together um, not only by listening to presentations, but by doing it, by using Moodle um, together with video conferencing. Uh, this is the first time that Moodle headquarters has run a online Moodle moot though, uh, fully online moot. So we've, um, in the chat there, we were saying that there was some before a few years ago, there was something called the iMoot that was run by uh, one of our Moodle partners and we, were, we took part in it. But um, we have some big plans to really uh, get good at this. So our events team are learning from this one. Um, you'll probably see the website and everything improving even during these two days. Um, and uh, we are aiming at having a global Moodle Moot, which will be um, obviously worldwide, uh, running over something like a week um, in July. And that will be multilingual, multicultural, uh, people from all around the world. And um, we really want to have a very exciting, huge, big conference. So this is what I love about that is that it's an opportunity for you to meet the Moodlers in the rest of the world and for them to meet you. Um, those of you who come here to the Indian um, focused event. Uh, when it might have been tra I think travel uh, to say Barcelona would have been out of the question before. So um, um, yeah, let's get really, really good at online events altogether. Um, so I have uh, um, a lot of things happening right now. You may have seen that uh, um, during the last some weeks, uh, if you're following our socials that uh, uh, we've increased the number of registered Moodle sites by a whole half again. Um, it was, was 100,000, it's now like 160,000. And that's just registered sites. Uh, the whole world is looking at online learning. Um, something like 92% of the world's school uh, children and schools are offline, they're closed. And um, and I, I know it's the same uh, in India as everywhere else, um, that uh, a lot of people are suddenly going online. And in most cases, um, there's not a lot of experience. Right into technologies, they're thinking, oh, I need to replicate what I'm doing in a classroom. Uh, and they're jumping straight into video like this. Well, video is one part, but uh, as you know, if you've been using Moodle, um, there are many, many other aspects to online collaboration. And that's our job uh, as Moodlers to explain um, the history of what we've developed. It's important for people to realize that uh, people's time um, is valuable. All of our time is valuable. And as much as we, will, we all want to help everybody, um, the, the idea that people's time should be free is not a good idea. This is a kind of a slavery idea. Um, people's time should never be free. We, we should all be um, you know, paid for our work. I think you know, everyone agrees on that. Um, and it doesn't stop when we come to online learning that um, you know, if you're teaching online, you should be paid to be teaching online. If, if you're providing a service online, you should be paid for that service. Um, where Moodle is very different from anything else um, out there that's very popular is that we give away the software. The software is free. The, the, our, um, the, the intellectual property that we've created is something that anybody can download and use. And that's the strength of Moodle and the, um, the, uh, the whole open source idea is that uh, you, you, uh, you know, I'm saying you as a general, anybody who wants to teach online has choices. You, you can choose to pay yourself 
to do the work of, of running this site. You can choose someone else to do the work of running the site and, and doing those things. Um, you can host it on a, on a service. You can host it yourself. You have these options and you can even switch options. Um, and so that's the kind of message that I'm talking about in many conversations that I'm having over the past uh, couple of months, especially. Um, because there's a lot of, uh, you know, um, this dot com or that dot com saying, oh, we can do it all for free for six months. And then you start paying and then you're locked into those services. And that's not, I don't think, very good for education. So um, welcome to the moot. Uh, let's let's get into it. Uh, I have some uh, some slides and a bit of a presentation. And I'll just take you through what's new and um, uh, very happy to have questions uh, during uh, during this. Um, so just type them in the chat there and I'll answer them along the way if I can. Um, otherwise, we'll tackle them at the end. Um, I think we have about an hour from now nearly um, and then we'll move on to the next, uh, the next sessions. So thanks for coming. Good to see so many familiar names and faces here too. Uh, Really wish I was seeing you in person and we were having doing some bunga at a party, but it's uh, like the, that first fantastic moot we had in uh, Mumbai, uh, or the second one. Uh, but uh, yeah, next time. All right. So uh, you know the Moodle mission. It's always good to, to uh, restate that, that we're about empowering educators. We are for the educators. We are supporting education systems. We are... are um, of course, it's about learning, it's about students, but we are not a project that's trying to, to go straight to students. Yeah, we can all bungra later at the end of the talk. We'll do it now if you want. Um, so our values uh, 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 don't change, like values shouldn't. Um, we value education, we value openness, uh, we value integrity, we value the respect um, and respecting different cultures and languages um, and uh, lastly innovation we want to promote innovation and uh, yeah it's the whole thing about the Moodle project is that Moodle headquarters we're a relatively small company um, and that the, the community around us is innovating a lot um, I'm seeing a couple of people saying they're having trouble with the audio. I assume that's just a couple of people. Make sure that your browser is uh, is set up to um, uh, to allow audio. And if you're on, say, a Mac or some platforms, uh, you need to maybe allow your browser to use audio. There is also, as someone mentioned, a button at the bottom to join the audio. It's like a little phone icon. So uh, what we're trying to do is build a platform and everything we're doing is about be building a platform. Um, I'm sorry to keep stopping, but we're having some audio problems. Can anybody hear me okay? Is it just a few people? Ah, okay. Okay. So can stay home, need to stay home. Keep at it. Um, now, very, very strongly, we believe education is a basic human right. And this is part of what the UNESCO world governments, most governments uh, believe. However, it's very often not treated that way in practice. And um, it's something I want to get to towards the end, particularly uh, how we can really push this point that education is a basic human right, not something you need to pay for or you need to be lucky enough to be in the right area. To support that, we need really strong foundations for Moodle uh, that we can trust, for education rather, that we can trust. And um, it's very important that, uh, that, that we can trust those foundations. I'm going to use an analogy here. Imagine we're living in Star Wars right now. I'm sure most of you are familiar with Star Wars. Um, imagine we lived on a planet in a Star Wars universe 
this is our little planet, one of many floating in the universe. And um, there is a, a galactic empire that's uh, trying to destroy the planet right now. And, and that, that is these giant profit obsessed companies. These are the ones uh, who are creating, have created, you know, not, not intentionally, but through the way they're structured in their actions have filled the world with plastic, for example, have uh, caused um, uh, climate change um, by putting things in the atmosphere, have wrecked agriculture by patenting seeds and genetics, um, are trying to control communications, are trying to control education, uh, are, um, you know, and to make profits. These are companies that um, have a board that is 100% focused on profits. And when you have that focus over your mission, uh, or when, when that is your mission, and I've seen many companies whose mission is, you know, to make a billion dollars this year or something, um, then that doesn't mean you're, you're supporting basic human rights, that you are going to be doing the best for all of us. You're going to be doing the best for the owners of that company. Uh, you know, just as a joke here, you know, maybe maybe Blackboard is Darth Vader. Uh, maybe maybe uh, its structure could be Kylo Ren, because um, these are these are profit focused companies largely. Um, and I don't want to pick on them. Really, there is a whole uh, a whole culture, a huge culture, that is getting into education as well, but is beyond education. And particularly in the internet world, um, there is a, a very strong uh, profit control kind of um, motivation that I find really worrying. And to me, there is a war kind of brewing right now. What's well, already it's already happening um, between the, the people who see and believe in the common good and the people who are trying to control things and profit from it. And these are the sort of companies that I do not think should be controlling education. And when I say education, uh, it's not just schools and universities. It's everything. It's our social media. It's how we get our news. It's how we talk to each other. It's all of that is all education. This is we're having education right now. Even if you're watching this on YouTube, you, you know, presumably you hope you're learning something. Um, so you know, I like to see uh, Moodle as part of uh, the resistance. Um, and there are a lot of really, let's say, the good guys here who are, uh, you know, the Open Source Initiative, Creative Commons, Open Education Global, Open Education Resources uh, in, in its many forms, uh, UNESCO. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a motley group. But um, they're fighting for uh, what's right. They're fighting for this idea that there's a commons that we all share, that we are all part of the same planet, and that we um, that, that the best thing to do is to be working together. Um, and so, you know, maybe 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 Moodle can be Luke Skywalker. I don't know. You know, in my it, from my point of view, you know, obviously we're the main character. Uh, I know we're we're not, but like we're definitely part of the group. And I just like the orange lightsaber, so I thought I'd use it. Um. So here we are. Uh, this is how many universities and higher education are using Moodle around the world. Actually, this is a slightly old uh, diagram. I, I'm sorry, I got this from an older presentation. There's an updated one from this year um, where we're actually at 67%. So two thirds of higher education in the world uses Moodle. Um, it's updated because the, the new version includes the Middle East and some other parts of the world that are not on this one. Um, so we, we have a lot of supporters and, and a lot of you are here right now. Um, this is a picture from our global moot in Barcelona last year, which was a fantastic event um, and really great to have. We had people there from uh, dozens of countries around the world. Uh, especially great for me because I had met most of them on my travels around the globe 
And finally, they were all in one room and they were talking to each other. And I was looking at all these people coming up with great ideas together. And it was just amazing, um, like all conferences. But this was a really, truly special event. So I, I hope we'll have them again. Um, but I'm very glad also that we're having them online more and more. Uh, there'll be less less uh, impact on uh, global warming and uh, just less resources use in general. Uh, we also had some. We had a pretty good party actually as well. So that's uh, uh, the global moot party was um, a really memorable one. We had a great one. So let me talk about the things we're working on, uh, the different projects, give you a bit of an update. Um, there are nine major areas that we work on and um, uh, I'll, I'll go through them a bit. That's okay, Chirab, I'm, I'm, I can keep an eye on the chat. I'm trying not to be too distracted, but uh, um, maybe I can. If you have questions, absolutely, that'll be great. So um, let's talk about Moodle, the LMS. Uh, so we used to just call it Moodle. Um, we now try and call it Moodle LMS to distinguish it from all the other Moodle things. Um, and that's Moodle Core and then there's Moodle plugins as well. Um, so we've got a new release coming up. We've been working hard on Moodle 3.9 and we've got um, some really uh, quite exciting work around H5P. So we're integrating H5P in Moodle by default. You'll be able to create new H5P activities on every Moodle site. You'll be able to uh, store them in a central content, content bank um, and share them around your site. Um, and uh, it's a very, very cool thing. If you're not familiar with H5P, it's just a really great, uh, it's another open source project that uh, uh, allows you to make very interactive content. Uh, there's improvements to the activity chooser, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, there is uh, some projects from the Moodle Users Association. Uh, there's a MoodleNet integration because MoodleNet is the other new project being launched. Um, and there's some work on the Safe Exam Browser and uh, hundreds of other tiny things as well, like most releases. So here's uh, just a quick view of the current status of the content bank. Uh, it lets you add new H5P activities into a central place, and then you can go and use them around in your courses because by their nature, these content items are very reusable. So we have a kind of a, a new concept in Moodle of a repository of these content items. And after H5P, we plan to add support for other activities as well. So you might have um, a Moodle resource or um, even like a glossary uh, or, or anything else uh, in Moodle that you might want to store and keep to be reused in many places, in many courses. Uh, the activity chooser work uh, is really improving the interface. Uh, it's a bigger screen. Uh, it's clearer to choose the things you use more often. Um, if there's particular activities you use all the time, you can star them and then uh, pick them at the beginning there. Um, there's also uh, some recommended activities and um, uh, it's just a, a better, cleaner interface designed by the UX team. Uh, Hamad, there's a question of our H5P. Uh, can you use previous activities that have been created? Absolutely. Any H5P activity is completely compatible. So you can just uh, migrate them into core. They won't be pushed into central, into that central content bank automatically. You'll need to do that, but nothing will break that you've done before. Uh, the uh, this is um, a bit of work from the Moodle Users Association um, to fix the participants page with a, a better filter. So if you have a very large class, sometimes you want to just find a subset of students. Uh, this lets you search by role, by group, by lots of things. Um, and it's a very uh, comprehensive way to just zoom into the, the students that you're interested in at a given moment. Uh, there's a new course copy interface. So to copy a course to another course, um, there's uh, a very quick way of doing it. There were other ways of doing it before, 
but this is a, a really nice uh, quick way of doing it. Um, a lot of people wanted to, to see that the the MUA chose the, voted this as a, as one of their, their priorities, so it was done. Uh, and the Moodle Net integration. So there's two parts to this. Uh, Moodle Net I'll get to is a social network that we're building. Uh, when you're adding an activity or resource, you're now able to go to MoodleNet from the activity chooser and um, you find things. And then the second part is you want to push them back to your Moodle site. So there's an add to Moodle button that lets you send it back. And um, this will be very exciting once the content builds up out there. Um, as well. Now I mentioned that Moodle LMS includes the plugins. There's over 1,600 different plugins in the plugins database. Um, these are additional features. A lot of you are probably developers have have things in this database. Um, we have a very exciting new thing that we're working on. Um, there is a problem right now which, where maybe at a, at a moot like this, I often go to a Moodle moot and I'll see someone presenting on a new plugin they've created and wow, look at this new functionality that I've made. And a lot of teachers go, wow, I want that. And they go back to their institution and they say, can I have this plugin? And the administrator will say, no, we, we're not installing these third party plugins or uh, you know, they, it's gonna take a long time to check it or approve it. And, um, and that's, that makes sense. They don't wanna be installing a lot of third party code on their servers uh, without some, you know, uh, checking. And so as a result, the teacher misses out and isn't able to use these features. So we have a new thing coming the, the Moodle plugins service. Uh, this will be next year where we're starting work on it now ish. Um, and we hope it will be ready by next year. What this will allow is that all of the plugins in the Moodle plugins database will be available by subscription. Something like, imagine it, uh, the, uh, the, the plugin store that I showed before, the plugins database is like a store. And you might have a, you could have one subscription that allowed you access to everything, or maybe you just say, I just want one thing. Um, and the plugins service allows a teacher to add it to their course directly because the actual code will be hosted on a cloud service and by subscribing to it, they're able to uh, bring it into their course. For students, it'll look like it's part of the site, part of the course, but actually that little piece is running on a cloud service somewhere kind of invisibly. Uh, and it will use LTI standard and some other things to um, to bring that into Moodle transparently and any grades that happen will get into the grade book and so on. So this is a service. There is there are servers that need to run. There's people who need to maintain them. Um, so there might be free stuff. We haven't worked out these details yet, um, but there, there will also be most likely some subscriptions and we'll make them as reasonable as we possibly can because we need to pay for the servers and people to do this stuff as I mentioned at the beginning. But a key thing about this is we want to pay the developers. So developers should have a percentage um, of this just like you do with an app store. So your um, Google Play, Android store or uh, Apple app store. Um, a percentage goes to the service, a percentage goes to the developer. Um, and this way we can create a, uh, a revenue stream for developers. So developers get paid for their work. And if developers are being paid to maintain these modules, these plugins, um, then they're motivated to fix it, to update it, to improve it, uh, to support the users, because now they have a direct connection with the, with the users. Um, and we can really build um, a place for developers to uh, to thrive, um, which means better software, better plugins, um, and so on. Now, it's a requirement, as I was talking about the advantages of open source, it's a requirement that all the plugins in this service will also be available as open source. So you have the choice. You can download the plugin as you do now and install it, 
if you can, if you want to. Um, and if you're not able to, there is a cheap, easy way to subscribe to that service and get that plugin directly. Yeah, it's a SaaS um, model there, but for Moodle plugins. Um, and I think this will really open up the whole plugins thing. Um, it'll be, you know, any teacher, you know, they might say, well, yeah, I really want this feature. My admin won't install it, but I can pay, uh, you know, a couple of dollars a month or something to get that plugin and I can use it straight away. And they don't need the admin's permission um, and they'll be able to use it in their course. So I think this is gonna really be amazing for the Moodle uh, ecosystem in general. Um, so yeah, very, very uh, happy about that. So that's on the roadmap. All right, the next thing uh, I wanna talk about is Moodle Workplace. Uh, if you're here inside the big blue button room that we're using, you would have got here through the, the events.moodle.com website, which is uh, running on Moodle Workplace. So you are using Moodle Workplace. It's Moodle as before, but it has some special workplace plugins. We're not using much of them on the events site. Um, they have a lot of features such as um, support for uh, multi-tenancy. That is one thing we're using. So the events website will have a, a tenant for every Moodle conference going forward, and um, but all running on one code base. But you can also have things like organization hierarchies, uh, certifications, report builder. There's a, a, a interface for building reports by dragging and dropping. Um, this will come into Moodle 4.0 as well, Moodle LMS 4.0. Um, certifications is actually coming into, I don't know, sorry, that's something else. Um, the, it has programs. So programs, you can have uh, one course, you can say, sorry, that a student must do this course before they can do this course. And then they have to choose one of these two courses and then they can do these three courses and then and so on. And you build a program of Moodle courses and it's all automated. And there's a really good feature, um, amazingly useful feature called dynamic rules. So for a particular site, uh, you can uh, program things to happen automatically. So for example, if a student uh, completes this course, then put them into this cohort or, um, or send them a message or send a message to their manager or, you know, all these kinds of um, little things you might want to do. They're possible with dynamic rules and you can kind of program the operation of the site. And we found that really useful when setting up um, the new Moodle Educator Certificate, which I'll explain in a minute. And we're using the workplace site for that. Very, uh, very cool. So um, there's also some new features like uh, appointments. Um, there's uh, recertification. These are some new things that have just been landing recently. Uh, we, soon you'll be able to share courses across tenants. So you can have, uh, well, no, actually you can do it now. You can have a course that is uh, one version of the course and then it appears in the different tenants. And when you update the original course, all the tenants get it as well. So you can you know, have that working across a lot of different uh, sites. Um, you can have reports for different audiences and so on. Now, this is still only available through Moodle Partners. Um, and there are two ways that, you, that Moodle Partners can get it. Um, we, most Moodle part, or all Moodle Partners have access to Workplace through Moodle Cloud. So we're hosting it on Moodle Cloud and um, a partners can um, uh, provide that to anybody um, through by being resellers basically. Uh, and we have premium partners who uh, have access to the code and are able to take it, modify it, hack it, do whatever they need to do to make um, sites. And that's more useful for larger installations. So we already have some uh, workplace sites for um, there's a new one that's just being announced at the moment. For example, in the UK, uh, the NHS is using Moodle Workplace for their training. That's the National Health Service. Uh, there's the, the, the um, you know, large installations like that are finding Workplace particularly useful. Now, the, the reason why we're not just throwing it out there open source is this is a very 
this is part of our sustainability, part of the um, part of a reason to be a partner, part of a, a reason to be a premium partner as well. Um, it 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 with more partners, we're more sustainable. We can hire more developers. We can make better software. We can put out more Moodle LMS. You know, in the end, Moodle LMS is the core our core product, um, and we need to always be looking at how we can grow to make that better and better and better for everybody. Um, our plan with Workplace is that these extra features will go into LMS over time. So right uh, in a couple of months, you'll be the new certificate model will be module will be available for anybody uh, on the plugins database. Um, and in the next release of Moodle 4.0, uh, the report builder will be included and so on. So it's we're, we're using the workplace model to help build cool things for, for Moodle LMS as well. Now, the next thing is the Moodle app. Um, now, there's been some really uh, a lot of uh, changes there recently. Um, it's really evolving very nicely. It has very uh, strong support for everything a student needs to do and quite a lot of what a teacher needs to do. Um, we also have the desktop app that runs on um, laptops and desktops, Windows, Mac, and Linux. Um, and we do provide a branded version as a service. So we will put the work in to create the interface uh, to look like your university together with you. Uh, and uh, so quite a lot of people have taken that up and that's um, um, a service that we provide. But uh, recently you may have seen, uh, I don't know why this is here, there's a second uh, um, screen by, by accident. Um, recently we, we kind of changed the plans and the services around the app and I wanted to explain that a little bit. Um, as you know, a lot of people use Moodle and uh, you know 99% of Moodle users don't pay for anything. They just take Moodle and use it for free and that's fine. That's that's why we're open source and, and how we work. But we wanted to provide another way for them to help support Moodle with a very small um, payment. Um, now I realize in India, uh, these numbers are a little higher um, than they, they are in other parts of the world and that's uh, something we're working on. But the... Um, th these are generally pretty small amounts compared to the budget of, a, of an institution and, and so on. Uh, so what we've done is uh, the, the free app has 100% functionality in terms of it, everything that the student needs to do works. Um, there are a couple of small limits. Um, one is that only two courses can be taken offline at a time uh, per device. Uh, and the second one that you can only have 50 active devices to get push notifications per site. So this should not affect small sites or uh, individual teachers at all. Uh, they use the free app, it won't experience any change at all. Um, if you need more notifications or more offline courses for the students, um, there's a pro and a premium plan. These are per year. Um, so for 500 euros, you get, uh, it's unlimited, completely unlimited. And what we're going to be doing actually is adding even more uh, things onto here as well. So we're, we're now able to let you customize the appearance. Have I got a slide about this? I don't think I do. Um, just by going to our new apps.moodle.com website, uh, you can customize how the app looks like through the web page. So you don't need CSS skills or any customization. You can actually uh, customize the app directly through that service. And um, so that's the sorts of things you get here. Now, if there are institutions that are nonprofits or really deserving and cannot pay these things, uh, you can apply and say, look, we, we just can't cover it. Um, so we, we have a way to apply for that on that website and, um, and uh, we'll, we'll give you a free premium site. The other thing is if you're using a Moodle partner, you get premium automatically. If you're using Moodle Cloud, you get premium automatically. So quite a lot of our users will be able to use premium by default automatically. 
and uh, um, yeah so this is just a way to you know the many Moodle sites that are out there in the world who have never contributed back to the Moodle project this is a little way we can have them contributing back uh, and help us grow as, a, as an organization all right Moodle net um, so Moodle Net, our social network, uh, I talked about it at the last Moodle in India, I'm pretty sure. This has been a dream of mine for years and years. Um, this is the third attempt at Moodle Net. We've had two iterations before, very simplistic ones. Uh, for this one, we had a proper team behind it, a lot of design and a lot of work. Uh, and we are building a, this social network with two main well, three main um, goals. So the first one is, as an educator, you can join communities of other educators who are thinking the same thing, who are working on the same subject, the same language, the same area, same level. Um, and what you do together is you curate collections of the best resources that are out there. So this is all completely free uh, and if you're teaching Bhangra dancing uh, to people who speak Portuguese, you know, maybe there's five people in the world doing that. They can find each other and collect those videos that make sense or collect those uh, resources that make sense for that subject um, in a place. Or, you know, even if they're just links to other places where they exist, now you can find them grouped together. And if you want to put them in your course, you just go add to my Moodle, click and it pushes it into your Moodle site. So for the next Bhangra teacher who comes along in Portugal, they are going to easily find this and they'll find great resources so they can start their teaching straight away. And I think we need, all need to see more Bhangra. Um, I realize I'm using this a lot. I didn't mean to. Now, um, the third thing is that you can have a profile there. So if you're a person who's contributing a lot to the network, um, you can build your reputation as someone in that area. Um, perhaps you're, you're running some communities there. And um, we would love this to be a kind of a, a network social profile as an educator that is more, it's better than something like LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn is sort of business, um, Facebook also, you know, sort of all kinds of other stuff. This is just for education and we would, love to see educators making that profile like the center of their online identity at least for the the teaching in that particular subject um, and we start seeing people having more followers and more um, uh, reputation so we, we can really find great teachers now in the world for each subject and and that will uh, you know help everybody to to find out who those people are So here's a few screenshots of MoodleNet. Um, this is going to be released in May, which is next month, as a, the first beta, which is pretty complete. And um, you can see the interface is nice and simple. This is not based on Moodle code. This is a, a whole new code that um, uses a different language even than Moodle. Uh, it uses something called Elixir. And the really key feature is that it's distributed. There is not one big central site. There are lots of sites. Uh, you know, you can install one and join the network and host your own communities and your own accounts on there. And because they'll all join together, it all appears to behave like one big social network. Uh, and that's uh, we've we've made this very deliberately because we don't want there to be a central point of control or failure. Uh, that uh, we we want to build things less like Facebook or WhatsApp or uh, Google or Microsoft or these things, and more like email. Right, so email just works, right? It doesn't. Everyone uses email and it works, and it's worked for thirty years. Nobody controls email. Nobody can take away your email. It, it's always going to be here. And that's what we want this to be, a, a, a distributed social network that will be here for a long time. And if you, we're using a standard to do this, something called ActivityPub, which comes from the World Wide Web Consortium, um, or W3C. 
uh, and this standard is is all about streaming information across the internet so publishing activity um, and uh, it it means that MoodleNet because it uses this standard is even compatible with other social networks that are being built and information can stream backwards and forwards so it's quite powerful and um, we have one of the one of the first social networks built around this um, this standard let me talk a little bit about Moodle education um, we have a new Moodle educator certificate that again we've been working on for about a year and a half two years um, it's due to be launched in a few weeks uh, next month, uh, you'll if you want, you'll be able to take the Moodle Educator certification. This is not a training course for how to use Moodle. This is a certification where you can prove that you are a, a very good online educator. Some of these things use Moodle as examples, but these twenty-two skills are actually general skills about. You know, what is your professional engagement? How do you engage with other teachers, uh, collaboration with them, maybe on MoodleNet or other places, um, the reflective practice, things like that. So how do you select dig digital resources in your courses and how do you create them? How do you modify them? How do you protect them? Um, assessments, strategies, uh, teaching and learning, the actual nuts and bolts of how you operate a course and do that stuff. How do you empower your learners? You know, things like accessibility, inclusion, um, how do you engage them, that stuff. And finally, how do you make your learners have digital competence as well? So how do you help them be literate with this technology and licenses and things like that? Um, how do you get them using things responsibly um, and, uh, you know, solving problems? So this Moodle Educator Certificate uh, is, it looks a little bit like this, it's just been updated and it's got, um, sorry, I just had some lunch delivered to me. Um, we, uh, uh, we hope to see a lot of these in the world. We're hoping there'll be at least a thousand by the end of the year and um, that we, we think it's gonna be a valuable thing to hold in your portfolio as a, that, that you've demonstrated um, that you are able to do all these things um, and proven it. So um, this will be uh, initially available through our Moodle partners again. Uh, so they, they'll do training usually and then the certification as a second step. Um, if you already know it, you can skip the training and go straight to certification. Uh, the, um, we will also later in the year be um, allowing institutions to sign up for the MEC as facilitators, which means they'll be like the partners in, in a way, they'll be able to run the training for their own institution. So if you have a lot of teachers and you want them all to go through this, um, it'll be more effective to be trained by us to run that and then uh, at a kind of a, uh, in a fixed group way and then um, and train your own staff and, and certify them. So we have a lot of Moodle partners around the world. We've got three Moodle partners here in India and uh, this, these are them, they've been the same for a while. So they're all here. Nice to see you everyone. And uh, thanks for supporting the Moodle Moot. Um, and uh, they're a big part of what makes all of this possible and, and how we're even able to make all this stuff in the first place. Um, I'm not sure why that slide is there, it looks old. Um, so let me talk about the future a little bit. Um, where are we going and uh, what are the things that we want to be um, thinking about? Uh, I mentioned we're here on the planet. What is the future of this planet? I think we've all had a huge wake up call in the last few months that something as tiny as a virus is able to knock every economy in the world backwards. Um, and I think it's a good wake up call for humanity that uh, this is a very small planet, that we are all connected, that um, we're not 
um, the superpowers we thought we were, uh, that we we're connected with the rest of the planet and the rest of the the world and the universe. That, uh, um, and I, of all the countries in the world, I think I don't need to explain this to India, um, as as one of the most spiritual places in the world. But uh, I, I think this has been a really good wake up call for um, for many people. And we need to take this energy. I mean, I was already, the stuff I'm going to talk about is stuff I was already talking about, but I feel it's more important now than ever that we really think about the future and how we set things up. Um, so we look, look now at, at, at what sort of things have been happening in the past few years. You know, the world is shrinking. Um, there is more data, real and fake, everywhere. So if you're talking about education and you want to learn things, you're looking at things I want to learn. If you don't know whether it's real or fake, if you don't know if there's any truth or behind it or whatever, it gets scary. And you can see uh, the viruses of information uh, now traveling across our networks. Um, there are people who uh, support all kinds of positions and believe all kinds of crazy things. And you can just look at the, the junk floating around on Facebook or WhatsApp um, to, to, to see, you know, what a problem it can be. And, and a lot of people just read things and believe it. And you can see what's happening in the U S for example, with their elections and, uh, and how they're influenced through social media. So, this is a problem, and, and last year actually, uh, and there's a lot more artificial intelligence around, and this stuff is getting smarter, and it's getting harder to tell from um, what we ourselves are making. Um, a face like this on a screen is getting very easy for a machine to create. I might, maybe I'm not here. I could be generated by a computer by now. This is be very. It's easily possible. My voice can be duplicated. My 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 picture can be duplicated in real time, and this could be completely fake. Um, it isn't. I promise you. And if you uh, can find some ways to prove it in the chat. But it could be. And in the future, this is going to happen more and more. Uh, last year, there was a, a, an AI released that can, you can give it one sentence and it can complete the article. It can write a whole article based on one sentence. And when you read the article, it looks like a person wrote it. Some of the facts in there are wrong. Uh, it's just junk. But when you read it, it makes perfect sense as something a human might have written. So you could point this uh, AI at the internet and say, uh, make 10 times the amount of content on the internet. Uh, you know, produce whole websites, produce uh, encyclopedias, um, and it would just do it. And, and when, we, when the world is flooded with this kind of fake information, it gets even harder and harder. How do we distinguish, right? Um, and this really affects education. Um, there is a corporate influence over news and government. I already talked about that before, but a lot of news is starting to become less researched by reporters who dig into a story and run around uh, interviewing and cross-checking and opening filing cabinets and digging up papers, and they're not doing that kind of research-based journalism anymore. They're just retweeting articles, basically. They, they hear something, they publish it, just like the social media. And, um, and when those articles can start influencing stock prices, uh, there's, inf there's actually incentive to start twisting the news, to start changing the news. Um, and when you see governments that are directly connected around the world, many of them are supported and funded by corporate interests, um, then it, this whole picture starts getting really bad. And um, with all of the issues where we're wrestling, they're getting very, very complicated. Uh, you know, I could say to you, how do you fix education in India? That's a huge, complicated, difficult, difficult problem. No one person can even start to think about it. Like it's, there are so many levels and so many, so many actors and so many parts to that problem that even the government doesn't know how to do it. Like it's, it's a very, very, very hard problem. 
and um, everyone is struggling. So the only way out of that um, is by improving um, uh, and, and solving these sort of problems, by the way. I mean, here are the bigger problems as well. Right? These are the SDGs. Uh, the only way to to solve those things is through quality of education. We need to focus on the quality of education. What type of people are we creating through education systems, through formal education? Um, and if we have a very large percentage of well-educated people, we have a better chance. Um, a lot of the best, a lot of the worst stuff just won't happen because uh, we've got people who know this, their dumb ideas. So quality. Um, so I, I have this idea that, that universities should model a better world. There is a chance here for universities in the, in the pursuit of quality to become like a research community, truly, that the students are part of, the staff are part of, and we research the real problems in the world. Why couldn't a university try new forms of democracy? for example. Most universities are the size of a small city. So in that there, you could start experimenting. You could experiment with, um, you know, how does the university use energy? How can we get our engineers in the university hacking the energy problems of the university? And so on, right? So you, you start having a, a model. And once they're modeling that, when those students move out into the real world, they can help fix those things too. Now, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to speed up a bit. People say you can't change these things, right? Universities can't change. We can't change education systems. Um, this is the alternative. The alternative is that, that these big companies are going to move in um, and control this stuff, and we know that the, the, they have a, an influence um, and they have a desire to make themselves rich. So they're going to influence us to make themselves rich and that's not going to help the problems. So um, the best way to do this is to get people uh, working together, get educators and students working and learning together. Um, and all together, all of those uh, universities and schools here together are much bigger than any company on earth. So how do we do that? We can do it with open technology and communities. Um, that's how Moodle spread around the world. So I have this uh, 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 a concept that I want, I'm talking a lot about at the moment, and it's open education technology, open ed tech. So Moodle is one example of that. There are many other examples uh, in the world. This is one you may know, Edu Rome is a little project uh, run out of uh, Europe. Um, there's a couple of people on it. They've built a system that enables anybody in these countries, if you have a Wi-Fi password in one of them on, at a university, when you travel across the world, your Wi-Fi password works there as well. This is a really amazing piece of open ed tech that everyone is working together to build. And now we have a worldwide service that we can all share. Um, Another thing about this, uh, another open tech example of, for the common good is that last November, uh, UNESCO made an open education resource recommendation. Uh, this is a, uh, every government in the world, except the US, because they're not a member of UNESCO, but everyone else, all the, all the ministers of education unanimously agreed to support open education resources rather than proprietary textbooks and proprietary information. So this is huge. This is like the whole world saying, we really want to make this stuff free. We want to let people download it. We want to let people remix it and share it and update it and change it. And so this opens up the, the, the textbooks, the knowledge, the, the content side of things. And it makes international cooperation much easier. So um, last uh, November, we had an open ed tech conference uh, where I brought together a lot of people. Uh, we, we had a lot of discussions for two days um, to discuss all these issues. We had people from open source uh, companies as well as uh, universities and other organizations. And um, we came up with 
um, after two days of brainstorming uh, and hard work and a small party um, or two, we, we came up with these 12 principles um, of what open ed tech should be. Now, I, I can't go through them now. I haven't got a lot of time, but if you go to openedtech.global, uh, you can find them there. And we have some focus areas. What we're trying to do together is we're creating a foundation um, that we'll, everyone will be members of. And we're going to work as like a working groups around building a global education cloud. So imagine EduRoam, but instead of just being for Wi-Fi passwords, you can put software in there and you can put data in there. So you can um, share, uh, say, uh, you know, like badges, global recognition of learning. We could actually start building global, global systems to recognize learning. Um, we can work on interoperability together. So let's make sure that Moodle and Big Blue Button and all the other open source projects work really well together. Uh, and so put effort into making those integrations super strong. Um, and uh, some other projects as well, I'm running out of time. So look at the website. Um, there is actually a Moodle site for discussion. We really love you to be part of that and help join in. Um, this will be updated soon with some new structure because we've been meeting and changing as we build this out. Um, so if, if the, we go back to Star Wars, um, and the resistance rebels that I talked about, uh, I would say I would love for open ed tech to be like the Jedi Council. Right? This is the, the, the people making the technology infrastructure, uh, working together to create something big, something open that everybody can benefit from. Uh, and uh, as we know, and then we can build a better world. So I'll finish there. Um, really very pleased to talk to you. Thank you so much for your time and, um, and coming to the moot. Uh, I'll, I'm going to stay online with all the other presentations over, to, over today and tomorrow uh, and joining with you. Let's, let's have a great Moodle moot. And um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being part of the Moodle community. And thank you for supporting and, and helping all of this stuff um, happen.